Former Ohio State Senator and surrogate to Bernie Sanders, Nina Turner, has filed 2022 campaign papers for the Ohio 11th congressional seat, but she has yet to determine if she will officially run. This comes after losing the seat's special election to Chantel Brown, a favorite of the establishment wing of the party. Here's a bit of my conversation with Ms. Turner about the race. I was told very early on by very well-connected people in the political world in, in Cleveland that there was going to be an Anybody But Nina mm -hmm. campaign launched and that they were going to come at me with a type of firepower unseen in an election of this type. And what I mean by that, the seat is securely Democrat. Right. So for more corporatist Dems or people who are any blue will do, it shouldn't have mattered mm -hmm. because the seat was going to go to a Democrat. And what that person told me, as we know now, turned out to be true. 13 people in the race and all of the firepower came in against me. And it was clear that uh, Miss Brown was the selected one. I think it could have been any of the other candidates, mm -hmm. at least maybe two or three of the other candidates. So it's so not so much about her as it was about me. That's from my podcast, Deconstructed. One good podcast deserves another. Friend of the show, Brianna Joy Gray, host of the Bad Faith podcast and former national press secretary for the Sanders campaign, joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Brianna. Thank you, Ryan. And so yesterday morning, when it, when it emerged that she had filed these papers, there was a lot of excitement online from backers of Nina Turner saying, look, she has filed a statement of candidacy. candidacy. Looks like she's in. Uh, it, it turns out that this was something of a bureaucratic move on her part because it's it's easier, as I understand it, to keep a previous campaign open if you're going to run again soon than it is to go through all of the rigmarole of, of shutting it down, shutting your accounts down, dispersing all the money to the appropriate legal spots. However, in, in my interview with her uh, and in other signals that she's given, she looks like 99.99% in. Is, is that your read on this? Look, it, it seems like per a recent tweet of her, she wants to keep her options open. And I think, you know, the wink and the nod is a little bit because you can never know what's going to happen down the line. But if I were in her shoes, I would be seriously considering it, in part because a lot of really important lessons were learned after the last race. And I was there uh, on election night when she gave her concession speech. And at that moment, she gave some strong indication that she was going to run again, saying that the fight wasn't over and the kind of um, dark money interference that she believes was really the death knell to her campaign wasn't going to go unanswered. So. You know, I, I think that you're right. I think that there's a pretty strong likelihood that she's going to run again. Is there any reason to expect the outcome would be different, though? Yeah, so let's talk about what some of those lessons learned really were. I mean, one of the major factors in the last race was that the race didn't actually happen on the date anticipated, right? In part because of the length of time it took for or Congress to confirm Marsha Fudge, um, the woman who you know, vacated the seat to become secretary of HUD, uh, instead of having a spring race, it became an August race, which affected the timing of Nina Turner's campaigns and allowed a lot more dark money to come into the race and hit at a crucial time um, that really derailed Senator Turner and put her on the back foot, catching up um, instead of being ahead and polling the way she was in the spring. Um, another factor was realizing that it might be time for progressives to get more serious about taking advantage of what our campaign finance laws that we don't agree with, but ultimately keep kneecapping us in these races. So I recently heard uh, Pete D'Alessandro, who is a Bernie alum who was brought on the last couple of weeks of this Nina Turner campaign to help, point out that this red boxing that occurs, which is the fact that this dark money could be raised by Chantel Brown, there can be indications on her website as to, you know, what she'd like for people to do that are vague enough that they don't rise to the level of coordination with the dark money, right? So it, in effect, enables people to direct a lot of dark money against their candidates and keep their hands clean when dirty advertising is afoot, the likes of which was 
everywhere in Cleveland in the lead up to the race. Additionally, the timing of all of those ads, ads which were very dishonest about Senator Turner and her record, claiming that she was against raising a $15 minimum wage, trying to paint Nina Turner as the conservative candidate in the race. The timing of that came at the same time that the uh, early voting ballots went out. So it was very difficult for Senator Turner, even though she ultimately was able to raise a lot of grassroots funding and basically match the amount of funding that Chantel Brown had raised, did so too late to make up for the early voting advantage. So these kinds of factors, if she is able to play her hand differently the next time around, could result in a different outcome. And I should I'd be remiss not to mention that one of the... Um, the last big factors is that this will be a higher turnout election, and it's going to be an election in which the Democratic Party's uh, interest and um, focus is divided across the country. And so there won't be as much ability to pay as much attention, put as much money, put as many resources from by corporate Democrats into this particular race to run an anybody but Senator Turner campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's one of the things she told me she's banking on, that she hopes that the, uh, that the corporate opposition will be, will be distracted. You know, they'll have too much going on. If, you know, if there's every House seat is up, a third of the Senate is up, people are preparing for the, for the presidential campaign. Uh, so two questions. One, do you, do, you think she's, do you think she's right about that, or do you, do you think that there's enough ire among that faction toward the squad and particularly towards her because she's both associated with the squad and with Bernie Sanders that they will they'll make time <laughs> in, their, yeah. in their busy schedule <laughs> for for taking out uh, Nina Turner and secondly redistricting will play a role in this if Ohio Republicans want to draw Chantel Brown a better seat they could they could try to find her more suburban voters that went her direction if they don't want to, they could give they could give the seat more of Cleveland and more of the working class neighborhoods that went so well for Turner. Do you have any insight into into how that is influencing uh, you know her thinking about whether to run? So, so to your second point, there's just a lot there's a lot of factors going on here. So she only lost by you know about a little under four thousand mm -hmm. votes, right? So one of the points I've heard her make in the past is that. College kids were not in, in mm -hmm. school. College kids weren't in session. A younger cohort that tends to lean to more, more toward Bernie and progressive candidates, that could be a factor, right? And I think that you're right to your first point that there are a lot of lower profile progressives that aren't going to attract the same amount of attention as Senator Turner. And to the extent that there's money to be spent to keep progressives from getting into office, certainly she is going to draw the bulk of that. But I do still think that the fact of having to diffuse diffuse time, money, and interest is going to ultimately inert to her benefit when compared to the last election result. Uh, on top of which, I, I do think it's important to note that this was uh, the timing of her election, the fact that she thought it was going to be in the spring and then in the summer affected not just the advertising, but also some staffing choices and other things in her, in her campaign. So of course, no one can know what the outcome is going to be. Um, the prediction game is a fool's errand best left to uh, masochists like Nate Silver. But I do think that there are enough novel var variables at play here that people who are hopeful and wanting to be supportive of Senator Turner in another run shouldn't feel like the deck is so stacked that they shouldn't give it a Girl Scout try. Because the flip side of Senator Turner of focusing um, being the, the focus of more negative attention is also that she has a higher national profile and ability to raise grassroots money than almost any other progressive who's probably going to be running um, who's not already an incumbent. Brianna, we really appreciate your time as always. Thanks for being here. Thank you both. Next on Rising, uh, progressive congressional candidate for Nevada's first district, Amy Villela, joins us to break down her campaign. That's next.